Hello, guys. My name is Dami, the CEO. Um, I just did a recent podcast with Prosper on the Online Prosperity Show. If you want to learn more about becoming financially free without compromising your fate, definitely check out this podcast. And thank you very much. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you Dummy, the CEO. Dummy, how are you, my man? I'm doing well. And you, how are you doing today, Prosper? I am doing fantastic. And I really appreciate you making the time for the Online Prosperity Show. And for those that are joining us today, today I brought you Dummy, the CEO. He's a young Christian entrepreneur. And Dummy currently runs a podcast called The Wealth in Christ Podcast. So we're here today to talk about how to balance your spirituality and financial freedom. A lot of people, um, you know, cannot balance the two because there's preconceived conceptions that either you're spiritual or you just have to deal with finances and dummies here to dispel, um, you know, you know, that myth in and of itself. So who is dummy and why should we care about what he's saying? Well, dummy was actually born in Lagos in Nigeria, but he later migrated uh, to the inner city of Queens. New York at age four, and he grew up being known as the guy who had a passion for Christ and um, business all in the same place. So obviously, um, growing up in these um, environments, he couldn't find anyone that he could look up to for the same passion. So he created himself into the role model that he wants other people to be. And then, um, you know, after doing um, a bit of prayer and meditation, Dami was actually given the vision for wealth in Christ. And we're going to be talking about how, you know, the lifestyles and the misconception, um, you know, of spirituality and financial well-being can actually coexist. Now, Dami, obviously I could go on and on, but you're here to tell us all of these things instead of me waffling all about. Just tell us about what it was like, um, you know, growing up as a migrant, especially in, um, you know, in inner city of Queens, while you just came uh, from Lagos. Do you remember any of, um, you know, those moments of when you just um, moved to Queens? Um, no, I, um, no, I don't. Um, actually, I, I have very little memory of what life was before I was four years old. Um, I came here and all I know is New York, New York City as my home, grew up in New York City, but, you know, I've had the privilege and opportunity to travel, you know, going back home to Nigeria, you know, um, recently in 2018, also traveling other different countries and also traveling different states have, you know, helped me get different exposure about life. Absolutely. And thank you so much. And what, what sort of differences have you seen now that you've grown in uh, Queens and going back to Lagos uh, in terms of how people deal with finances to start off with? Oh. Uh, you know, one thing I can say going back in 2018, it was definitely a humbling um, experience. You know, you really see how um, here in America, you know, you can you take things for granted, you know, you know, just the simple of having breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, you know, and if you don't have breakfast, lunch and dinner, you can always rely on the church who will give you food, you know, you can go home and things, you know, there's shelters, all these different things. But going back home in like a, a country like Nigeria, which is, you know, they deal with a lot of political movements. Um, war and, you know, civil wars and all that stuff, you know, some people may not have the privileges of, you know, having that kind of resource. Yes, there's organizations that go back um, to help people, but it's not reaching everyone. You know, Nigeria is one of the most populous um, Black country in the world. You know, we have the most youth, about 200 million youth, I believe, um, correct, you know, I think about 200 million youth, you know, and most of them are, you know, striving to become successful, looking for jobs. And here in America, there's there's no job that I can't do. Like, there's always a job opportunity, but over there, you can see that it's a lot. Like, it's, like you have to have that mindset and not let the environment get to you. You know, you have to really be determined. You have to really, you know, trust God, like, you know, trust and believe that he can get you out of it because it's so easy to get deterred by your environment and, you know, how your parents may live, your siblings, and just, like, just give up and just go through life just like that. Absolutely. So when you grew up, you didn't have any role models and you decided to be, um, you know, your own role models. Um, how is what you're doing right now affecting maybe any of the 200 million youths that you just mentioned in Nigeria? 
Um, you know, I have a, a couple of fan base here in the United States of Nigerian, you know, I go to Nigerian church and, you know, um, to just to take a step back in my journey, you know, growing up, you know, as a Christian, you know, and with the eager to know more about finance and trying to figure out how to combine the two, you often go, you often run into two things, either people quote the scripture, first Timothy 6, 10, you know, for the love of money is the root of all evil or money is the root, money is the root of evil. Um, and that usually deter people, you know, from getting money and things that, you know, chasing, chasing financial freedom, you know, and thinking it's possible. Or as well, you know, people have never seen their parents, you know, my parents are not um, millionaires or anything of that sort. So just see them just go to work and constantly go from day to day, worrying about bills and things like that. So that's something that from a young age, I knew that I didn't want to do. And in Nigeria, there's a couple of people, you know, who are privileged to have companies, you know, if they have music or, you know, part of politics, their family, they set, but there's people who don't have that same privilege, that same opportunity that they have to work. And I'm not saying there's anything against working, but working should be used as a tool to start your financial freedom. You know, you can invest into stock, you can invest into crypto, real estate, whatever your main interest is. And that's what, you know, my passion, uh, my journey is about is to show people that it's possible to become financially free. And just to clarify, you know, being financially free does not mean that you're going to have um, every single thing, you know, you can buy every single um, thing on this world, but being financially free is that you have that choice of that freedom for your time, you know, to do what you want. You can help your family. You don't have to worry about you getting kicked out, you know, the next day, your bills are being taken care of. Uh, you can use that same money to push the gospel as a Christian, you know. Um, so that's what I believe financial freedom is to give you that freedom of choice and time. Absolutely. And I, I am of the same school because if you've got uh, enough or if you've got abundant resources, then obviously you definitely can be uh, able to help others be doing and have a happier existence. Now, you did mention, um, you know, your family and how you would have grown up. I just want to maybe find out because in some families, you know, they grow up uh, sort of telling their kids that money doesn't grow on trees or, um, you know, um, you know, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we are not made of money or those sort of uh, negative connotations regarding financial uh, education. What was it like uh, growing up in a migrant family um, that is just obviously coming to America for greener pastures? What was, what was the feel around money in your household? Um, that's definitely a great question. Um, it was definitely uh, a poverty mindset. Like, you know, they have to work for money. You know, I have to uh, go to work. I have to do this. Uh, I have to work overtime. I have to uh, do all these different things in regards to money, basically where money was their master, like, you know, and it was not that, you know, like, for example, uh, if I was supposed to go and spend like $50 or something like that, just to use that as an example, my mom might say that's a lot of money. In my head, I'm just like, it's not a lot of money. The reason why it's a lot of money is because it's how much value you hold on to it. You know, money is where we give value to it. If you don't give value to the money, it's not worth anything. And me coming with that mindset that money is what we give value to, I understand that if something's going to, like, for example, uh, going flying from one place to another, goes from different state to different state, if it's going to cost me only $50 to go there. I'm going to pay that $50 instead of, you know, taking the train or the bus. But my parents would say, because they're trying to save money, they'll take the train or the bus. So it's like, they, they, they don't see how money can be a tool to make their life easier. And I feel like that's a lot of things that people think that they don't see how you can make use money to make your life easier. Whereas we invest into stocks, you know, we get in dividends, you can use that dividends to invest into a business. If you invest into real estate, you can use that, um, that rent to invest into something else or something, or even take care of your own self, you know, um, live that kind of luxury life that you desire. Um, so that's something that was very challenging. And even when I started this journey, um, it was a lot of question, you know, how far I would take this because no one has ever taken a step outside of, you know, the nine to five and trying to take this risk and build a business um, and learn about building business that then besides me really. Absolutely. So your podcast and your message is basically uh, or loosely based around wealth in Christ. And we've, already established that a lot of people do not find those two 
um, you know, lifestyles, um, you know, as, as things that can coexist together. Now, obviously, there's scriptures that tell people, you know, that money might be the root of all evil and everything else. Um, why do you actually think that people have such, um, you know, a, a strong sentiment when it comes to those two, um, you know, lifestyles coexisting, being spiritually and financially free all at the same time? Um, I think it has there has a lot to do with you know the environment people are raising, you know oftentimes as you know African American or just a, a black Christian you know when you think of wealthy people the first thing that comes to mind are like Nigerian Nigerian pastors or T D Jakes, you think of all these wealthy prophets all these different things, and then, you know there's nothing wrong with them being wealthy but. You know, you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be some type of spiritual leader to gain such wealth. Um, you know, oftentimes people, you know, misread or not pay attention to that. Even Paul, you know, who wrote most of the book in the, in the New Testament, he was a tent maker. He had, you know, money that he used to, to grow his ministry. You know, even Christ, you know, he was a, a carpenter. So they used money. Like it was, money was involved in a, in a way to move the, the ministry further. Um, and I feel like oftentimes people don't really take the time to understand that it wasn't for money and, you know, other people like investing, you know, wealthy people, things that sort of that were Christian during that time to push the gospel for it. We wouldn't have the gospel now here. Um, and I also think because um, outside of, you know, the preachers I mentioned or spiritual leaders, people haven't seen anyone really um, do both. You know, it's not just someone becomes very successful, like a rapper or some art, um, actor who becomes successful, win like an award, they're like, oh, thank God. It's like, but during that process of them, you know, building and growing, there's no thank God, there's not no acknowledgement of their relationship with God. And I feel like that's something that needs to be shown. Um, Cause all my podcasts, I've interviewed about 50 plus people um, who have shown that, you know, them trusting God, you know, them staying true to the biblical principle has bought them great wealth. Absolutely. So, I mean, Jamie, you've built um, sort of a considerable following uh, on your podcast on social media, and you even have a Facebook group that talks about, um, you know, praying and investing. Walk us through what, what it is that you are, you know, you know, dealing with in, 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 in your message there. Um, so the Pray and Invest group for those who want to join is definitely going to be a group that, you know, we will... Um, Network with other Christians, you know, who are trying to reach financial freedom in Christ. Um, because you know, I want to say this one scripture. I think it's Proverbs 13, 22. It says a good man leaves inheritance for his children. And you know, and as for, for that to happen, it means that you need to make some type of you need to have some type of wealth, you know, to give to your children. That's in the inheritance. And it's impossible to do that if you're not investing, if you're not growing your money, you know, whether it's investing to business, real estate, or stocks. Um, so this um, Facebook group is a group where you can connect and network with people of that same mindset and learn, you know, grow, you know, we'll have people from the podcast that I've interviewed come and share their own tips and give more knowledge on how they reach their financial freedom. Absolutely. And what sort of people need to be a part of this group, um, you know, in order for them to learn uh, these things that you're teaching? Uh, if you definitely want to learn more about, you know, you're a Christian and you definitely want to have financial freedom, you don't want to live a life where you have to wait till you're 69 to enjoy life, or you don't, you want to leave an inheritance for your children, you know, the Pray and Invest group is definitely a group that you should join. Um, you could definitely um, listen to the podcast, you know, whether it's on YouTube at Wealth in Christ podcast or Apple podcast or Spotify or wherever you get your podcast from, you can definitely listen to any of those episodes and see how the different guests that have what, you know, they were able to stay true to themselves, have faith um, and, you know, through time and, you know, through being consistent so they will become successful. They was able to become successful. Absolutely. So obviously in your journey as an entrepreneur, you would have noticed that it costs money to earn or to make money, right? And, um, you know, you're talking about podcasting, you're talking about having a social media group, podcasting needs equipment uh, and all the things that, you know, for you to sound good and to look good, 
Um, and you do mention uh, in one of your posts that one of the biggest entrepreneur lessons that you um, you know, learned was that being cheap is expensive and you're better off buying the best product that you can get uh, or maybe investing in the best mentorship um, that you can afford than paying for multiple bad products or mentorship just because you wanted to save money. Just walk us through that lesson and what it is that you actually extrapolated from that and what you can warn people, um, you know, moving forward in the future about, you know, skimping on paying for quality. No, uh, that's, um, that's definitely a great lesson. Um, you know, like in my entrepreneurship journey, you know, like with anyone, you, I'll go as a try to save money, save as much money as possible. But the difference between trying to save money and being cheap. Um, I just, there's definitely a difference. So for example, like, you know, when I first started, um, the laptop that I was using will definitely, you know, will break up, you know, it will like shut down. And I'm like, oh, no, it's okay. You know, I can manage, you know, I can just change a few parts in it, you know, take $300 or $400. Um, but, you know, when I'm recording, I'm making content, you know, the, the can't laptop will crash. So not only, you know, yeah, I spend $300, but that's not only, that's the only thing that's cost me, it's costing me my time, you know, time for the computer to reboot. And, you know, it takes the computer to like, take two or three hours. That's time that, you know, I have to wait and sit there. Now I compare I have a new MacBook, you know, it's working fast. I can edit, I can do multiple tasks at once. Yes, it costs me more money, but I save time uh, and things are getting done efficiently. And oftentimes I think people don't see things that way. Like, you know, being cheap does not help. You know, the, if you want to get to success, success less speed, you know, as one of my mentors would say. So you want to be successful, you want to reach this financial freedom, you have to try to do things as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. You know, procrastination is only going to delay you from seizing the opportunity. And by the time you're ready to take the opportunity, it may not be there or it may be costly. You know, this laptop right now, let's say I say, oh, this is too expensive. Apple's going to come with a new laptop. You know, now this, you know, that's a new product and that's probably going to cost me more money. Still paying $2,000 or $2,500. Now I'm paying $3,500. So that's a $1,000, you know, lesson right there. And that's the same thing we can apply this in our everyday life, you know, whether is um, you're trying to learn about something. Yes, it's easy to go on YouTube and listen to six hours of videos or just search on Google, but it's different if you come and learn from someone who has experienced what you had, a mentor who has already achieved that financial freedom, but you can just ask your question directly and get a response. You know, that does not mean, I'm not saying, I hope this is make sure everyone's clear. I'm not saying go um, overextend yourself. That's not what I'm saying. But if you, you want to make cal um, calculated risks, um, that's why I will, that's why I will say calculate a risk that makes sense. Because if I had this new MacBook, I would edit video so much, you know, much quicker. The hours I spend, you know, who knows how many hours I spend trying to trying to be cheap and save. Like, oh no, it's okay. I'll wait, you know, until things blow up. You know, you don't know when things are gonna blow up. You never know when that opportunity is going to be there. And and the only thing I can say is better to be prepared than to try to start getting prepared. You always want to be prepared because you never know who's going to say, oh, yeah, i seen that video you made or i seen that podcast interview you did, you know, so I definitely want to work with you. Or I see that business idea that you're working on. I definitely want to work with you. So you always want to stay prepared. Like one of my guests says, um, one, is be on your best behavior. And I took that with me because you never know who's listening. You never know who's watching. And it just goes to show like you always got to be on point. When opportunity comes, seize it. Don't spend too much time, you know, procrastinating. Don't go to people who's gonna, you know, talk down your dreams. You know, a mentor mind said, the one of the, the quickest way to kill a dream is selling to small minded people because these people don't have that mindset. They don't have that vision. Even now, as I'm building my brand, there's certain things I can't tell people. If I tell people I spent a thousand dollars on a product or spend a thousand dollars on a pro, they'll ask me, why did you spend that thousand dollars? Because they don't see no value there. And that's, you know, and that's the reason why people don't do certain things. You have to understand the value of your time, you know, the information is going to give you. That's what you're paying for that information. I would pay any amount of money for someone to teach me how to make $10 million or whatever may I'm looking for to go is in, in a year, then trying to search up on YouTube and have all these questions and not have no one to answer. So that's what you have to look at it. You know, since financial freedom is, is a journey, is a process, but you have to be intentional every single day, wake up, that you're gonna, gonna do everything in your power to become successful. 
Absolutely. And, and I love the flow in how you're talking about that, because half of the time we might think we're saving um, money and time, but obviously time equates to money. And if you have none, then it's just going to be, a, um, you know, a, a waste of both. OK, so, I mean, obviously you've got a lot of things going on. You've got, you know, your idea, um, you know, progressing and you're actually working with other people within your Facebook groups and you're disseminating your message through uh, YouTube and um, your podcast. What can we expect from you, Dami, uh, say in the next five to ten years? Um, in the next five or ten years, you could definitely... Uh expect like a conference that I would definitely have, you know, uh, that's something I definitely um, would love to have. And I'm, you know, I'm working towards too. You could definitely continue to expect me to have content, you know, around, you know, why it's possible to become financially free without compromising your fate. Um, you could definitely expect me just, just being better as, a, as an individual. I feel like, you know, that's the best investment I can make into myself, the society is being better. And if anyone's listening, you know, if you want to make an impact in this world, it's being about investing yourself, you know, what is reading a book, you know, what is investing into a course, you know, pay that price, you know, it's just it's a sacrifice into what the wealth or wealth of knowledge or material things that you can gain. Absolutely. I love that last sentiment of you having to, um, you know, urge people to pick up a book and read because half of the time, if we are going through a problem or if we're going through uh, certain things in our life, somebody has written a book about it. So you will save a lot of time, um, you know, trying to figure things out by yourself, where somebody has already gone in and created, um, you know, content around that. And I really appreciate that you're going to be diversifying, um, you know, your message and really reaching out to a lot of people through a conference. And um, obviously this is something that I will have my eyes peeled out for. Now, Dami, I really appreciate your time on the show today, but, you know, somebody's probably si sitting there and they're thinking, ah, you know what, my parents taught me, you know, money's the root of all evil. I don't need to be all day. I don't need to be uh, wealthy. Um, you know, I don't need to have all these extravagant, expensive things. You know, it's all a sign of, um, you know, evil. What, 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 what would you tell somebody who is of that certain uh, mindset? And, um, you know, what, what is it that you can encourage them to do? And what perspective can they start looking at life from? That's a very great question. And, uh, you know, the first thing that came to mind, you know, when people ask me that question is, you know, why do we need money? You know, that's, I think that's the more important thing. Like, why do you need money? I think that's, you need to first understand that um, because if you say you don't need money at all, you're definitely lying. And the reason why most people misquote that scripture, most people say money is evil, is say the love of money is evil. So that means that you need to put God, you need to put money in the place of God. And if you are able to know that God is God and money is just a tool, you know, you can amass so much money and it's not going to mean anything to you because money does not change who you are. Money does not solve problems that money can't solve. And, and once you have under that understanding that money is just a tool, you know, so you can help others. Money is just a tool that you can reach, um, have that freedom to say, okay, I don't need to work that job. Oh, I don't need to do that thing. Because oftentimes, you know, people with that mindset, they fall themselves into being slaves of money because they're always looking for the next paycheck. And if you're listening to me, you probably want someone that is always looking for the next page. Like you don't know what to do with your money. You're scared to lose money, you know, um, and you don't have any other good example of someone who has, you know, build wealth and not, you know, have money become his master. You know, it's important to understand you don't want money to become your master. That scripture is talking about money becoming your master. And if you look back in the Bible, when you talk about the young prince, um, you know, the reason why um, Christ told him to go away, you know, like uh, he, he felt sad, you know, when Christ told him that he can't buy his way to heaven because he put so much value into money, you know, forgetting that money can only solve money problem. What he, the situation that he was coming to Christ with, he couldn't buy his way into it. You know, I think that's something we need to understand that money is something that we're supposed to use here, enjoy, you know, help each other, you know, help the poor. If you read 1 Timothy 6, 17, 18, it talks about the responsibility of for those who are being wealthy. You know, just having money is not good enough. Money comes with responsibility. So if you're someone who's wealthy and you have the fund, you have responsibility to society to take care of people, to make people's life better. 
as long as as well as make your own life better because that's what the point of money and you know for someone that's you know as on the sidelines still saying you know what i'm saying is not true you know just look at the you know look at look read the book of proverbs you know the wisest man and the wisest man ever to live you know he talks about how you know money can change your world like change your world you know that's the difference that separates you know the ones that are slave to not you know people who borrow are slaves to those to the lenders you know um you can't leave an inheritance for your children you say you want your children to have a better lifestyle but how can you have give your children a better lifestyle if you don't have you don't have money to give them you need money to buy that kind of lifestyle you need money to buy them that new uniform you need money to get them to that university you know oftentimes especially in the African community, you know, we're always looking for a way to bury people. But once you have that kind of, you know, resource, whether it's life insurance or you make an investment, you don't need to be putting your business on social media to tell people, oh, donate to this. No, you can handle your business and things can keep moving on. That's why the wealthy continue to get wealthy because the wealthy do what wealthy people do while the poor are just worrying like, oh, money's just that, money's not important. No, money is important. But at the same time, you don't want money to be a, be a master. So I hope that helps somebody. And a, book, a good book to read is Poor Dad, Rich Dad. If you never read a book, you know, by Robert Kiyosaki, it definitely explains, you know, expands your mindset. But, you know, I can only say so much. And, you know, prosper can only say so much about being, you know, what it's like to become financially free. But you have to make that choice yourself. You have to be consistent. You have to wake up every day and say that I'm going to become successful. I'm going to do what I need to do to change my family tree. Because I can help you do that, change, give you that mindset. Probably can do it. You have to make that mindset. Fantastic. I really appreciate your time on the call today. And if you're watching this part of the show, you will definitely have learned quite a lot from Dami, the CEO, who obviously came uh, at a young age you know, to the city of Queens in New York. And now he's leading a, a revolution that is helping other people to be financially free while also enjoying uh, spiritual freedom. Now, if you want to be financially free and have wealth, obviously it is a mindset. And from what you've heard from Dami, it's something that you can actually achieve by reading books and actually uh, engaging with mentors that are out there because the ultimate role of money should be able to afford you the time and the resources for you to grow spiritually and delight in what you have and be grateful so you can be able to share that wealth with others in order for you to help them have a happier existence. Now, wouldn't that be nice? I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Danny, for your time. Thank you very much, Prosper. Good work.